Okay, I'm back with the second lecture in chapter four. And as promised, we are going to be talking about uh, Newton's first law. And uh, what I'm going to use as, as an example, and I'm going to sort of preview, this is going to uh, use a lot of physics that's not particularly in this chapter, but it's going to preview a lot of stuff that we're going to study in later chapters. I want to talk for these 10 minutes about the Voyager 2 spacecraft. That was launched in September 1977. Okay, I'm sorry, Voyager 1. I want to talk about Voyager 1 in this lecture. Okay, so I encourage you to go on the internet and look at the Voyager 1 spacecraft website or any information you can get, get on it. It's very fascinating. The, uh, the whole point was to get a spacecraft uh, through the entire solar system and it is now uh, well, well, well beyond the solar system. Uh, right now they are saying that um, as of 3-2010 it was 1.7 times 10 to the 13th meters from the sun. Okay. So, I actually want to use uh, Newton's second law right now. And Newton's second law is F equals MA. <coughs> and something that we're going to encounter in later chapter, chapters that I'm just going to spiral in right now because we really don't give it enough uh, credit later on is um, the equation for the gravitational force between two objects. Now, so this is Newton's second law, force equals mass times acceleration. When you have two objects connected only by gravity, this is the equation that, um, that you use to determine that force. And I'm just going to, we'll, we'll talk, we'll introduce it later, I'm going to just sort of use it right now. Okay, so this force is equal to that force. So since the two forces are equal to each other, I can set them equal to each other. Now, I don't know the mass of the Voyager spacecraft, but it's really nice because I have a mass over here, and that mass is the mass of the Voyager spacecraft, and that mass right there is the mass of the Voyager spacecraft. And so since I have the mass of the Voyager spacecraft on both sides of my equation, I can cancel it out, and I don't need to know the mass of the Voyager spacecraft. Now, I can figure out the acceleration by knowing this number g. I just happen to know this number g is um, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th newtons meter squared per uh, kilogram squared. And I happen to know the mass of the sun is 1.99 times 10 to the 30th kilograms. And I happen to know that the radius, as they gave us from up above, is 1.7 times 10 to the 13th meters. And I have to square that. Remember, <coughs> you have to square it. You have to square the bottom. One thing that I say as a physics teacher all the time is, did you remember to square the denominator? 
So please remember to square the denominator. Now, how are we going to plug this in, these big numbers, on my calculator? Um, I'm going to plug them in like this. 6.67. Now up here there's an EE button right under my finger. There's a, so I go second EE and that does the times 10 to the all by itself. So I go up negative 11, so right there I've got 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th times 1.99 second EE to the 30th divided by 1.7 second EE 13th. And remember, I have to square that number. And right there I've got my acceleration is 4.6 times 10 to the negative 7th uh, meters per second squared. Okay, what's my point? My point is that the acceleration due to gravity What I'm saying is that the acceleration due to gravity is negative 9.81 meters per second squared. For us, <coughs> right here on the Earth, that's the, that's the acceleration of an object near the surface of the Earth dropping towards the Earth. So that's what we're used to as an acceleration. If I just drop a pen, we're used to an acceleration of negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Right now, the acceleration of the Voyager 1 spacecraft is approximately this. There's some other things working working against us, but that is approximately the that is approximately the acceleration of the Voyager 1 spacecraft. And this right here, that 10 to the negative seventh makes that an extremely, extremely small acceleration. So the question is, what is the Voyager 1 spacecraft doing right now? And the answer is, right now, the Voyager 1 spacecraft is moving in an extremely straight line. That basically, the Voyager 1 spacecraft is just tracking straight through space because there is no there is no force acting upon the Voyager 1 spacecraft and so Newton's first law takes over which basically says if there's no force acting on you then you just go in a straight line. Okay, and then if we want to figure out how fast it's moving we'll just throw that out there uh, right now. Uh, it says, we'll get this done here in the next minute, uh, right now the website says it is going 3.6 AU per year and I'm just going to do a quick calculation for your benefit. Um, if we take 3.6 AU over one year, I know that an AU is an astronomical unit which is the distance from the Earth to the Sun which is 1.5 times 10 to the 11th meters. And then I know that um, basically one year is going to be 365 days times 24 hours times 3600 seconds per hour. And so if I just go really, really quick because I'm running out of time, I get 3.6 times 1.5 second EE 11 divided by 365 divided by 24 divided by 3600. I get 
about 17 kilometers per second. So that's the current speed of the Voyager spacecraft in a straight line through outer space because there's no external force acting on it. That's that lecture.